Hi, I'm Diane Dayton. We're at the 20th annual VF Outlet Berks Jazz Fest in Reading, Pennsylvania. Sitting down right now with Richard Elliott. Hi. Hi. So good to have time with you. Thank you. Nice to be here. Well, you've been all over the place traveling with Rick Braun, haven't you? Yes. We've been spending way too much time together. <laughs> no, it's great. We were the best of friends, and we always have a good time. How long have you two been together playing? Well, you know, it's interesting because we actually traveled in the same circles for quite a few years before we actually met. Um, I was in Tower of Power from 1982 to 87, and around that time he was playing with war. And we all kind of knew the same people, but we never actually met. Mm. And it wasn't until about 10 years later that we met. And, uh, and he was starting out on his career, and I was, you know, working on mine. And uh, we started doing a couple of shows together just where... It was a co-bill. He was there with his band and I was there with mine. And um, that sort of evolved in, into a friendship. And uh, it culminated in um, 96 or 97, we uh, did guitars and saxes together. Now, he doesn't play guitar or sax. Uh -huh. So that year was called Guitars, Saxes, and More. And More. He was the more. <laughs> and, um, and then we really, really got, uh, got into a, a friendship and, and started working together, doing more shows together. And, and that led to um, ultimately doing uh, Jazz Attack, mm -hmm. which w was also with uh, Peter White and Jonathan Butler. And, um, and that evolved into R&R. &R. And actually, it, it evolved into a partnership. We put a, a record label together called Artisan Music Group. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, we did that and did R&R, &R, did my solo record, Metro Blue. And... Uh, his uh, solo record, uh, Yours Truly, and uh, we did that on the label, and uh, so it's been great. I mean, we've musically, I respect him so much, and I find that I can play the same song that I would play in my own band. I play with him, just bouncing off musically, and I'll play completely different. He mm -hmm. pushes me in different directions, yeah. and yeah, it's it's really it's great to have a relationship like that. It sure is. You were playing in Russia. That was an interesting time, wasn't it? It was. It was. I mean, I'm a, uh, a child of the Cold War. You know, I grew up with the, you know, the duck and cover stuff and, and uh, the, the evil empire of the Soviet Union. So I had specific ideas about what it was like. I mean, I knew it had changed to a certain extent, but I didn't know really what it was like. So I kept coming up with images of, you know, mm -hmm. real gray and, and uh, you, you can't say anything. And, Boy, boy, was I wrong. I got there. It was such a vibrant place. People were so friendly, uh, and they're into jazz. And mm -hmm. we played uh, played several shows, and people came out, were very appreciative, and it just was wonderful. We had a great time. You get involved with the community and a lot of important issues, and one of those things is music education. You just did a fundraiser, I believe. Tell me about that. Well, there's a fundraiser that we do every year or so uh, in California, in, in Escondido, where I live. Uh, and the, it's the L.R. Green Educational Foundation, and they uh, basically raise money uh, that goes straight into the schools. The problem is, like, for example, the traditional PTA type thing was, you know, it's great, but that money uh, goes into to the school board, and the school board decides what they want to do with it, with the Educational Foundation they get the chance to raise money and funnel it anywhere they think is appropriate. And typically what they'll do is they'll bounce it off of the teachers and let them sort of dictate where it goes. So I was uh, listening to a report several years ago, and uh, they were talking about how teachers uh, were having to come out of their own pockets to buy school supplies because of the budget cuts. I mean, literally, paper, pencils, mm. Things like that. If once they ran out of their allotment for the year, they had to go buy it themselves. And I just couldn't believe what I was hearing. Mm. Uh, so, uh, being a parent myself, I looked for ways that I could get involved. And one of the ways was to uh, uh, get hooked up with this educational foundation. We do a concert every every year or so, and we raise money. And uh, one of the things that the money goes towards is supporting a music program. And uh, there are still many, many schools now that don't have music programs mm -hmm. because of the budget cuts. And uh, the feeling is that, uh, you know, obviously learning to read is very important. But uh, not much acknowledgement to arts programs in, in certain parts of the country.
Mm-hmm. And uh, so it, it's such an obvious thing to me anyways that music is so important, not just for kids that uh, want to make a career out of music, but it's such a great thing to develop that side of their brains. And it's been proven scientifically that it, in, it, it helps in areas like mathematics and because it's a very logical thing. But also it, it, ha- it, it enriches and develops that creative side of kids' brains. And that's, as, as far as I'm concerned, just as important as the analytical side of the brain. Yeah. So... Um, I'm just very happy to be a part of it in some small way I can help, and uh, mm-hmm. I'd like to do more. Yeah. yeah. It is important, and we do need to keep music as a part of our education in schools. When you're on stage, you are having so much fun with what you do. What are you thinking? What are you feeling on stage? You know, it's a myriad of things. I, I couldn't say I feel any one particular thing. I will tell you one thing. Before I go on stage, and, and I, this sounds corny, and, and Rick will attest to this, uh, when we're working together, I mean, I would say at least once every other night, we will say it's great to be able to get up and play music. It's a it's a mm-hmm. privilege that you I we can make music and people care enough about it to buy a ticket and come to a mm-hmm. show or buy a CD, and then we get up on stage and get to do something that we love doing so much. And I've always said that part of what we do, I, I mean, we play for free. Well, we, we get paid for the other 22 hours in the day. I mean, mm-hmm. dealing with the airports and different hotels and, and all that stuff, that's the hard part of what we do as far as I'm concerned. And the playing part, playing music part, that's what we do that for free. That's yeah. the fun part. And, and I, I'm, I love the fact that after doing it for quite a few years now, I can still feel grateful and thankful to have the opportunity to do it, and I do. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a, a gift and a blessing and, and uh, not, nothing to be taken for granted, that's for sure. Mm. Well, you do such a wonderful job. We really enjoy Thank you. hearing you. How many CDs do you have? Do you know? Uh, <laughs> About? <laughs> 15 or 16, something like okay. that. Okay. Yeah. And you're working on another one. This one's going to be a little different, right? Yeah. You know, the last two CDs I did, uh, solo CDs, um, mm-hmm. Metro Blue, I decided I wanted to kind of harken back to my musical influences growing up, which for me was R&B music, uh, and particularly in the 70s, because that's when I was in middle school and high school. And uh, I started out with that concept, and it morphed into something else. It became kind of almost more of a Euro, R&B kind of Euro vibe to it. Um, so with this latest CD, Rock Steady, I said, all right, this time I'm going to follow through. And uh, <clears throat> I picked three songs from the 70s, and I built the CD, even the original music, around those three songs. And it was Rock Steady by Aretha Franklin mm-hmm. and Move On Up by um, Curtis Mayfield yes. and Keep On Truckin' by Eddie Kendricks. And then we built the whole album, the original music, around that. This time, I'm taking a completely unstructured approach to it. Um, I called up all my friends yeah. uh, you know, to write with, and, and we're just writing. And we'll see where it goes. I'm just mm-hmm. going to kind of let it pick its direction. That doesn't mean I'm going to come up with a hodgepodge of music that goes in 50 different directions, but I'm going to kind of see, keep it, I want to say organic, but that word is used way too much. Uh, but I want to let, let it sort of find its own direction. We'll see what happens. Sounds good. I can't wait to see what happens. Thanks so much for taking time Thank with you. us today. It was really good to see you again. Likewise. We're Thanks. coming to you from the 20th Annual VF Outlet Berks Jazz Fest in Reading, Pennsylvania.